Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I wanted to talk about some more books that I have read recently. So if you haven't read any of these books, that is no problem. These are the books that I'm going to be discussing today, so if there is a specific one that you would like to hear about, then I will have the timestamps in the description box down below. But we've got a good mix here of some contemporary, some fantasy, a very anticipated release for me that I got an arc of that I read, so let's just get into it. I guess I'll start off with that really anticipated release, so that is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. So I was so excited for this book honestly and I'm so happy that it did not let me down. This is coming out on May 18th so there's still a little ways to go but Christina Lauren is my favorite romance author duo. I love their stuff. They have so many romances. They come out with like two a year and I would say out of their recent ones this one is probably my favorite. I also did really enjoy the Honey Don't list but I think this one kind of surpasses that just because of how unique it is. So in this story we follow the main character, I can't remember her name because I'm terrible with that, Jess, that is her name. We <laughs> follow Jess, who is a single mother, and she doesn't really try to date. She just doesn't feel very optimistic about it, but then she gets the opportunity to sign up for this dating service that is actually based in DNA. And she is a, I don't know how to say this, st statistician? Like, st 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 <laughs> like, she does statistics for a living, basically, like freelance statistics. So she's really into numbers, so the science behind it does very much interest her. But it ends up being a little twist when she decides to sign up for the service and she ends up being a 98% match with one of the founders of the dating service. So she wasn't expecting that and as the dating service is about to go public, they decide that they are going to do a little fake dating thing. She's going to be compensated for her time and they are going to kind of use it for publicity. But like it's not a publicity stunt because like it's real but it you know it just kind of worked out that way anyways I feel like I made that way more confusing than I had to I'm sorry I was automatically really intrigued by the dating service that this like story has I felt like it seemed like a very interesting opportunity to kind of twist things I feel like it's not the typical romance because of that I loved the fake dating aspect which I wasn't actually expecting I didn't know that was going to be part of it going in so that is a trope that I love so that was a really nice surprise it's kind of a little bit enemies to lovers like he's not exactly the most warm character the love interest so it takes time to warm up to each other but I did completely buy into their chemistry like immediately and I don't know if it's just because like I was told that they scientifically have chemistry so I was like yes I see it like it is definitely there or if it just like they really had that chemistry I'm not sure which one it is but either way it worked for me one of my favorite thing about Christina Lauren's romances at least like their more like they have this whole business series that that one's very smutty but most of their other romances aren't super smutty and that is what I enjoy like I don't like a ton of smut I kind of like the slow burn leading up to the relationship and enjoying that romantic side of things and that's what I got in this book as well. I also loved the supporting cast of characters. I really really loved Fizzy. She was fantastic so she's her best friend and she is a romance writer and I thought that was a really neat element to it because she was also fascinated because of this dating service. She's like, oh, I could write something about this. So like it was kind of meta in that way. And she was just a really great friend. And you also have her grandparents because her mother isn't exactly the most stable mother. So she doesn't really have that much of a relationship with her mother, but her grandparents raised her and they are very prevalent in the story. And they were so sweet. Like I loved that family dynamic and having her daughter. I've never read a book by Christina Lauren or I don't really think I've read like maybe one other. I think I've read one other but I can't think of what it is but where the main character in a romance has a child. I don't I can't think of what it is and that's bugging me but anyways this is the first one by them with that and I wasn't really sure about that but I thought oh what I'm thinking of is undercover um no the bromance book club like the first one but in this one she's raising her daughter by herself and you see her as like this really strong single mother and looking out for her child like I love the relationship that she had with her 
her daughter. I wasn't really expecting this to have like the twists that it did, so that was really interesting. I feel like a lot of people might see those twists coming, but I didn't, so that was enjoyable. Like I never see twists coming, so that's not surprising, but I just, with romance novels, I tend to like think I know how things are gonna go, I know how it's going to play out, but in this case I didn't, and that was kind of refreshing. Overall, this was such a fast read, I just could not put it down. I kept on reading it, reading it, and I just didn't want it to end, but it also was adorable and I was very satisfied with how it ended. It was all around just a very enjoyable read and definitely a new romance release to look out for. I'm not at all going in order of how I actually read these books, to be honest, I'm just kind of picking up stuff. So the next book that I have here is Star Daughter by Shavita Thakrar. I was really excited when I found out about this book because I thought the concept sounded really cool. So the main character is the daughter of a star, so she's half star and like stars are like godlike figures and she ends up accidentally injuring her father and in order to save her father she ends up having to answer the call of the star song and go to like the court of stars if you will and there she has to compete in this competition so she can hopefully save her father. I thought this was so interesting. Like, I loved the world of it. The concept of stars and them being these godlike figures was fascinating to me. And it also was really rich in culture. So Hindu culture is very prevalent in the story and I thought it was really seamlessly blended into things. Like, there were things that I had to Google to see what the creatures were, but I don't mind that at all because like, I don't need to be spoon fed, you know? Like, I can Google, that's totally totally fine and I thought that it made it like not so jarring I guess. I feel like if they had like really described everything and laid it out it wouldn't have been as immersive of a read so I really didn't mind googling things. I thought the world was super well built up and really fascinating. I thought this was actually going to be a high fantasy but it's not. It's an urban fantasy which I guess I should have known going into it because she's half star so she's half human. That was really dumb of me but whatever I didn't know that. <laughs> but I thought the blend of like the world that we know mixed with the star world was very well done. I will say though this did kind of read like a debut fantasy. It is a debut fantasy and I think it was a solid debut but it did suffer in some ways and kind of read like a debut. The writing was really really beautiful but it was kind of a little bit too flowery at times. I think it suited the story perfectly, but sometimes it did kind of take you away from like knowing exactly what was going on because it relied really heavily on purple prose. But that's not saying like I did love the writing. I thought it was very nice. It just kind of was a bit heavy at times on that f the flourishes, if you will. One of the biggest issues that I had though was the pacing for this. I found the pacing to be very off. The whole time you're building up to this competition and it's quite slow but then like the competition happens and that is over very quickly. The ending was pretty rushed for me well I felt like the rest of it was kind of like a lot of build up and kind of too much almost so I feel like it could have been a little bit more evenly paced and I would have liked if the actual competition part was more a part of the story because I felt like it was just something at the end to wrap everything up. There is a romance in here and I didn't really care for the romance so much. I feel like it was prevalent and then it was kind of forgotten and then it was prevalent again and I was like, oh, I kind of forgot that that was a thing. <laughs> and I cared more about the friendship. Like the main character, Sheetal, has her best friend Minal is with her and their relationship was so beautiful. Like I just loved how strong that friendship was and how much they cared for each other. There were also a few instances of info dumping that I felt like kind of bogged down the story at times, but I think that it had a certain certain whimsy to it and the world still was like very lovely to read about even though I felt like at times I did get like a lot of information at once. It was just kind of a pacing issue again. The pacing issue really came to a head in the middle when you're following the main character as she's just trying to understand things and trying to figure things out for a very long time which is understandable because like she's trying she has like she's faced with a lot and she's in a completely different world so she's trying to piece things together but just the this focus of like paragraph after paragraph 
paragraph of her trying to figure things out, trying to understand things, learning things. It felt really repetitive after a while because there wasn't really a lot of action to break it up and it just didn't make for the most pleasant reading experience throughout the middle and really made it dry. I will say I think the whole concept of stars was very cool. The element of having like stars being hunted for their blood and the power that it possesses and then the competition itself that it was surrounded by art like stars acted as muses and they inspire people to create amazing art and I thought that was really interesting like having this art based competition and I think that's why I wanted the competition to be more in the story but overall I think this was a really cool debut I think it was totally worth the read like it was very whimsical and everything that I wanted really except it just did have like a couple of technical issues and then personal preference things where like I would have liked more of the competition but it was very cool and I think it's actually a standalone fantasy too which is like a unicorn in the book world so it is one that I think is worth checking out it was super unique and I did like it overall so next up is now that I found you by Christina Forrest so I actually have another book by Christina Forrest that she wrote before this one that I need to read and that one is I want to be where you are I think so I do want to pick that one up soon especially because I really liked this one so now that I found you is a Hollywood based story and I used to really like those when I was younger I remember when I didn't read a lot there was like this one series and I can't I can't think of what it's called but the cover looked like a like purse almost I feel like I don't know it just had a pattern on it maybe it was like confessions of a Hollywood starlet no there was one where it had a star on it it was black and then it had a pink star on it I don't know there were like two that I read and really liked it I was super into the Hollywood thing but this was a nice return to it because it was mysterious it kind of it makes me think of Evelyn Hugo a bit just because of like the old Hollywood starlet and that aspect is in the main character's grandmother so the main character I want to see her name I completely can't remember Evie so her grandmother is this old famous Hollywood starlet and she has been away from Hollywood for a very long time and Evie is trying to make it big she finally gets this like great deal that is going to change everything but then she ends up getting betrayed by the person she thought she could trust the most her best friend and this video releases of her that like ruins everything she loses the movie deal and she has to try and piece everything Thing together. So part of this plan that she makes up to try and fix things involves her grandmother, but then her grandmother goes missing, so that is obviously problematic. So you are following her as she is trying to find her grandmother again and also like piece together her life again. This was just really sweet. I thought it was very immersive in the world of Hollywood. Like it's actually set in New York City, but you get like the starlit side of things. And Milo, the love interest, he was so like I just loved him. He was such a great character. So music actually comes into this as well because Milo is a guitarist for a band and he is also, you know, trying to make it big. I felt like Milo made the perfect match for Evie because he was so extremely likable. Like you just want to hug him and squeeze him and love him. And Evie isn't so much that. Evie is a little bit of a tougher character. She's more self-centered and it kind of makes sense because, you know, she's trying to make it as an actress. So she has to look out for number one and and she also has come out of a situation where she was betrayed so obviously she's going to be looking out for herself but she definitely can be a harder character to like because she doesn't seem to think of the consequences or like what might happen to other people when she acts and I thought that Milo kind of brought her down to earth which is why I enjoyed the pairing of the two of them. I loved Evie's grandmother Gigi as well I thought she was fascinating even though she's like not so much in the story like she is but since she she's missing she's more of a presence and you're piecing together her history and learning more about her and I thought that it was really fascinating to like piece things together and see who she was I felt like overall it really pulled me into Evie's world and all that made it up and that was a really terrible sentence but like it was just a really fun little game almost trying to figure out like 
where she had disappeared to and why. This was a super fast read as well. I think if I had had more time when I read it, I would have been able to finish it in one sitting, but it took me two, but that's totally fine. Like I just breezed through it because it had so much going for it. It had the intrigue. It was a sweet and adorable story at the same time. There were just lots of layers to it. Like you're watching Evie develop and I would say she developed a decent amount. Like she definitely has a little bit more to go, but she's getting there, which I think is what's important at the end. And like it was kind of nice not to have like an arc where the character completely is different has changed everything and is a completely new person like she still is who she was at the beginning she just has started kind of making some changes to be a better person and kind of be less self-centered so overall I had a great time reading this and it definitely has made it so I cannot wait to read the other book that I have by this author next up I finally like finally freaking read this book and that is Unbirthday by Liz Braswell. So this is the latest release in the Twisted Tales series that Disney has and this series I have quite a few of them. They're actually behind me and I haven't read them yet. I keep on talking about doing a readathon for them and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I haven't had the time but it will be coming at some point hopefully soon. I'm really sorry about that but I knew that this one I didn't want to read for the readathon. One because it's a little bit bigger than the others and two because it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling and I wanted to like dedicate all my time to it you know I didn't want to be like feeling like I had to read it in a certain amount of time I wanted to be able to enjoy the experience of Wonderland. So this whole series it takes a typical Disney fairy tale and it twists it on its head so it asks a question and like the whole story is answering that question. So this one is what if Wonderland was in peril and Alice was very very late. So as excited as I was for this book honestly I was really nervous going into it like I I don't know I just was like what if I don't like it because I had built it up so much in my head. I haven't read an Alice in Wonderland retelling in a really long time and I felt like this one was like a solid place to start but I was not let down by this at all. I had so much fun reading this. Like it had the nostalgia but it was also fresh and new and it was the perfect mix of the two. I felt like seeing the Wonderland characters that I know and love I could like easily picture them and even picture like the cartoon characters from like the original Alice. I could picture them so well and it just made my reading experience fantastic. Like it was full of the nonsense and whimsy that I would expect but it's also a little bit darker and you get to see Alice in an older setting. I will say she did read a little bit younger than she is supposed to be. I think she's supposed to be 17 or 18. No she's 18 and she read younger but at the same time I wouldn't expect her to read like as an older character because I think the point of Alice is that she remains childlike and has that imagination and she never loses that so I didn't mind that so much. But that being said you did see her getting to deal with some older situations like marriage is something that is on the table like everyone's after her for and she's just like not interested so she stayed true to who she was when she was younger but also had matured a bit from the Alice you know from the original movie. There were so many little moments that like paid homage to the original movie that just that made me so happy and then also moments that stayed true to Lewis Carroll's book so it was a nice mix of the two. I loved that you got to see more of Alice in the Victorian society and in like an actual real world setting and you also got to see more of her sister and that relationship dynamic was very interesting. I loved that the politics of the time came into it. I wasn't at all expecting that it was going to deal with immigration and prejudice toward immigrants but it did so in a really seamless way and I loved that that conversation was brought up in the story. I also loved the fact that photography was brought into it because photography is something that was new around Victorian times and was super big and you see Alice like getting involved in photography and it also connects to Wonderland and I thought that was so clever and like I just I loved that from the very beginning. The one like mini thing about this it's really small the pacing was kind of slow but I didn't mind that so much like you kind of jump in and out of Wonderland and Victorian society and I thought that it was very well done like the mix of the two I didn't feel like one was kind of favored over the other it just kind of read a little bit more slow than I would have liked but that's like a very very minor thing overall it felt like coming home reading this it was so sweet it had all the charm of the Wonderland that I know and love all of those characters like I felt like they stayed true to their character characterization and Alice especially like it was just so much fun and has made me really excited to read the rest of the Twisted Tales 
details that I have. Next up is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Naimi. So I would heard some really amazing things about this book and I do think that my expectations were a little bit too high going into it, but that's not to say that I didn't enjoy it. So you follow the main character. Oh my gosh, I can't remember anyone's name. I want to try and do it without looking. I think it's pronounced Leela. I remember I wasn't sure if it was Leela or Lila, but I'm going to go with Leela and I'm sorry if I'm incorrect, but that's just what we're going to roll with. So she is having a really rough time. Her abuela has died and her best friend has left her and her boyfriend has broken up with her so she is just not doing very well mentally and her family ends up sending her away to England to Winchester England I kept on saying it was London but it is not London it is Winchester England and she is sent there to live with a relative and hopefully to recover from everything that she is facing so I loved the fact that this was set in Winchester and not London like it was really cool to see a different setting in England and I thought it was very charming and you also have the love interest Oren who was super super sweet and I will say as much as I thought he was adorable I wasn't like super super invested in their romance until there were certain moments that I was like okay that is actually the cutest thing and then I realized that I did care a little bit more than I realized but one of my favorite things about this was the cooking and the baking like really the baking specifically but it's also like a mix of cooking and baking I didn't know that that was going to be a part of the story going into it but it is like so prevalent in the story. So Leela wants to be a baker. She's super passionate about that and specifically like the recipes that her abuela cooked, she connected with her through that. So it's something that she has such passion for. And really overall passion is the name of this book, honestly. Like the passion for Cuban culture was so prevalent in this and her love for her home in Miami and her love for her family and her passion for cooking you just got to really see who Leela is even though she's suffering a lot. You got to see all that she loved and it totally came through in the entire story. Like the cooking, it just made me so hungry. The descriptions of things, the smells of things, like it was super vivid and also her love of her home and her culture was like very, very important to the story. And I think that part I did kind of struggle with a little bit. Like I think that it's important to her because her family is there, like she loves Miami so much. And I think I just struggled on a personal level, like connecting with that because I've lived in the same city my whole life and I don't really have a deep connection with it other than my family being here. So the fact that she was so upset to be in England was very confusing to me and kind of annoyed me at times, but that's just like, that's entirely a personal thing. And maybe it's just me being stir crazy for not being able to travel anywhere either and being jealous about that. However, I did enjoy when she started taking those strides toward healing and getting through all that she's been facing. I thought she made incredible leaps and bounds of character development throughout the book, but not in an unreasonable way. This book managed to transport me both to Winchester, England and her like getting to know that culture, but also to Miami and getting to know her culture of home. And I thought it was really interesting that it was able to transport me to both of those settings, despite like it's really only set in the one. I thought both were very vivid and really well done. So I did enjoy this a lot. It was fun and cute and at the same time it had a lot of emotion to it as well. So it's a little mix of everything in here and all of it was just very well done. I've gone on for way longer than I was expecting to so I'm really sorry about that but the next book that I have to talk about actually the last book that I have to talk about is Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifuco. This was such a cool read, a super unique fantasy and like I totally fell in love with it. In this book you follow Tari Sai and she has been isolated from everyone her entire life. She only knows the lady who is her mother figure but she never even really gets to see the lady so basically she is just so lonely. She's desperate for a connection and she gets the opportunity to be part of this group like the Emperor's son. Basically the Emperor is a ray bearer so he has like the opportunity to connect with 11 different council members and and they are known as rays. Like it's a very hard thing for me to explain. The book does a way better job of it, obviously, <laughs> but she has the opportunity to be one of these council members to have this connection. And for her, that seems like the ultimate opportunity because she is so desperate to have someone to connect with and not be left 
left alone all the time. And the problem with this is that she has the lady behind her who has made it so she has this mission. Kind of, it reminded me a lot of Ella Enchanted in that way, where she has to kill the prince. And she doesn't want to do that, obviously. So there's a lot of drama. The magic system of this was fascinating. Like I said, I did a terrible job of explaining it, but I thought it was so unique and I just was completely absorbed by it. Like it was very well explained and the world was built up so well and I was super invested in like the history of it and where it would be moving forward. There were a lot of characters in this story between like the council members of the current emperor and then you have the council members of the child emperor. I can't like, I don't know how else to say that, but there were a lot of characters basically, but I thought all of them were really well developed and the dynamics between all of them was like whoa and there were a lot of twists that I did not see coming I never guess twists but like especially these I like totally was like wow okay didn't see that coming and I was like what but I loved what the twist did I felt like the story was completely turned on its head and I just I'm very excited for the sequel now one of my favorite things about this story was that you got to follow the characters from a pretty young age and you get to see them develop and I felt like seeing them from such a young age in the early stages of life I became very connected to them and just wanted what was best for like all of them and I loved seeing how they progressed over the years. I loved the fact that it covered such a long time period, but it really didn't feel like a long time period. Like this was a super fast fantasy read. There were some relationships though that I felt like they were going to go a certain way, but then they didn't end up going that way. And I liked that it didn't end up going that way. Like I thought that it was kind of going to follow a typical thing in that the love interest was going to be one person, but then it wasn't. And I really enjoyed and appreciated that little twist. Overall, I felt like this was a great book with a mix of political intrigue and social intrigue and those relationships like I felt like all of it was blended really seamlessly and there was a lot of action but not too much action and never really too much info dumping either it was just such a pleasure to read and kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time wondering what was going to happen and I'm super excited to read the next one whenever it's coming out okay so those are all six of the most recent books that I have read so I'm really sorry that this was so long I just could not stop talking about any of them but I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you have read any of these books your thoughts on them because I would love to know and I will see you guys in the next video very soon bye